there's a question that keeps coming up, which is, um, is it safe for me to update the firmware of my Ledger or um, update and use the Ledger Live software? I think this is an important question that we need to answer before we move on. Um, any thoughts on yes, that? Yes, but not from an email that's told you to do it. Yeah, so uh, what Peter's talking about is there's been an email that was circulating yesterday that was an email that appeared to be coming from Ledger that said that due to this phishing attack, you should update Ledger Live and then had a link to malware. Um, so the fishers were phishing using their phishing as an excuse. Um, so how do you do the firmware update? How do you get the software? First of all, um, and this is important to understand, you do not need to use the Ledger Live software to use a Ledger. There are dozens and dozens of software wallets that connect to hardware wallets, whether it's for Ethereum or Bitcoin or others. Um, and there are some concerns about um, the privacy related practices of using the vendor's software and what they can glean uh, in terms of which addresses you're interested in learning about. Um, but that doesn't mean that the software is unsafe. If you get it from their website that you verified by typing in or using a bookmark and you uh, are sure that you're at their website, I think it's perfectly safe. When dealing with firmware updates, you can verify the hash fingerprint um, of the firmware. But your device would also be verifying a digital signature on that firmware. And there's no indication that the attackers have been able to seize private keys that are being used in the software distribution pipeline. Um, so uh, I would feel comfortable updating the firmware on my ledger right now. I can't tell you what to do. Anybody else want to take that? I don't believe that uh, malware firmware attacks have ever actually occurred outside of laboratory conditions. It usually requires, you know, crazy edge case exploit that it's usually a security researcher <coughs> who is stumbling upon it. <coughs> <coughs> I'll just add on that. <laughs> um, no, but, but Jameson's 100% right. One of the reasons that we see such complex, sophisticated, scary, like unblockable attacks against hardware is that there's a lot of security researchers that are going like over the top to try those attacks. In reality, um, they, they just don't happen because it's way easier to give you a telegram link where you voluntarily hand over your seed. That's reality. The laboratories, the security researchers, they do really fun stuff. It's super fun to think about. But again, uh, most likely your loss will come from either you losing your seed or voluntarily giving it up. I mean, it's pretty clear, right? The pattern is don't give up your seed. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So where do you put your seed? You only, only type it device. on the hardware wallet itself. Only on the hardware wallet itself. Only on the hardware wallet itself. And in a safety box. Yeah. <coughs> like well, not here, not here, somewhere. Yeah. There. All right. So you never, it. never, ever, ever type those twelve to twenty-four words on any th device, any computer, any online system, any website. Don't take any a photo. Any keyboard, of anything. Don't take a photo of it. Don't put it in a Google Doc. Don't try to encrypt it on a USB drive. Physical recording on a durable medium multiple copies in different safe locations, and then you only ever enter it into a hardware wallet device directly on the screen using the little finicky buttons that take 7,000 key presses to keep type out everything. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support me, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com.